was a dream that was Rome. It shall be realized. These are the wishes of Marcus Aurelius. In this video, we are going to look at the tallest build ever in Stellaris. I'm going to be showcasing an empire that can have an infinite number of pots and yet somehow still remain under a hundred empire size, meaning they're getting absolutely no penalties to either their research speeds or their tradition costs. This is, I think, the tallest build I've basically ever seen. I can't even see over the top of it. Let's dive in and look at Babel & Co are the tallest empire this game has ever seen. There are quite a few important parts of this build, but it absolutely would not be possible without the new Sovereign Guardianship Civic. This is a Civic you can only get access to with the brand new Astral Planes DLC. Let's dive into what this does. First off, it unlocks the Fanatic Guardians as defense armies. It allows you to build a reloading bay in your star bases and enables the Inner Focus Edict, allowing you to convert influence into unity. That's great, but doesn't really affect this build. You're going to get some extra modifiers on your empire, plus 100% size from planets, branch offices, and 150% size from systems. That is definitely a downside. It means if we're trying to keep our empire size under the magic number of 100, above which we start getting negative effects, increased research times, and increased costs for traditions, we need to make sure our empire size stays as low as possible. So increasing it, yeah, that's not good, but we get two lovely modifiers. First, the empire size from pops is reduced by 50%. And second, the empire size from districts is also reduced by 50%. What we are going to do is we are going to stack those modifiers with other similar modifiers in the game to allow us to build an empire that has a small number of planets, maybe 5, 10, or 15, but a possibly infinite number of pops. And all of that while remaining below 100 empire size. If that wasn't enough, we also get plus 20% diplomatic weight, an extra unity from our soldiers, and the first Citadel Council position. I won't go too much into that one, but it's really, really overpowered. In order to take Sovereign Guardianship, we must take Militarist. If we wanted to take Pacifist, that would reduce our empire size from Pops, but only by minus 30. And we need that sweet minus 50% that Sovereign Guardianship is giving us. Additionally, we also must take some level of Egalitarian. That will be important a little bit later on. You don't need to take Fanatic Egalitarian like I did, but I've taken it for the economic bonuses, and by combining it with Parliamentary System early on, I get some massive unity output from my factions. But that second Civic is entirely unnecessary. You could pick from Spiritualist, Xenophobe, Materialist, or Xenophile for your third ethic point, but it's entirely up to you. And in terms of our second Civic, you can take anything you'd like, as long as it isn't a Civic that will be locked in because we will need to change that second Civic as the game goes on. When it comes to Origin, you can take basically anything you'd like. I'd recommend Ocean Paradise, Life Seeded, or possibly Remnants to get a head start on having that maximum sized homeworld. Options like Shattered Ring or Void Dweller are also pretty viable though. Looking at traits, you can basically do anything you would like. I'd recommend Rapid Breeders, over the alternative and usually better incubators because we're going to be stacking pops like you would not believe and we really don't want that minus 10% pop growth speed when our planet gets above 40 or so pops. In some ways it's quite unfortunate that we have to take egalitarian. If it were possible, I would love to take some type of barbaric despoilers because the raiding bombardment stance would be amazing for abducting pops and then putting them on our lovely, lovely tall world. But alas, we need egalitarian, so we simply cannot take that. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to get your hands on Stellaris or Stellaris DLC with some great discounts, the Black Friday sale for Paradox is on now at Humble Bundle. You can get your hands on some great deals, support charity, and support this channel by following the link down in the description below. One solution to this problem is to take 
that's in time. This means every time you win a ground combat, you'll abduct the pops as slaves to random colonies, and you'll get 30% of the pops on any planet that you invade. You don't have to conquer that planet, you do not even have to be the primary war participant. You simply have to fight the good fight and land your forces down on a world, win the invasion, and thus take 30% of the booty home in the form of juicy juicy population. Don't worry, because you're not going to be going for authoritarian, you won't be bringing anyone back as slaves, unless you took xenophobe I suppose. Now to push our empire size from pops as low as possible, we have to take a couple of traditions. We must take the domination tradition, as the finisher there grants us minus 10% empire size from pops. The kinship tradition within Harmony grants us another minus 10% empire size from pops. Combining that with Beacon of Liberty, which you should probably reform into if your empire size starts getting close to 100, will get another 15% empire size from pops. That is at base 65% empire size reduction from pops from our civics alone, and another 20% from traditions to take us up to 85. The psionic theory technology gives us another minus 10%, taking us up to 95. But Montu, I hear you say, didn't you say I could get an infinite number of pops on my planet without going over 100 empire size, and if my pops still contribute 5% of their proper empire size values, I surely will go over 100 at some point. Well ladies and gentlemen, don't worry, this is where galactic politics steps in to bridge the gap between what should be possible and what is possible. And if you're enjoying this video please, heighten that like button. As you can see here, I am generating absolutely no empire size from my pops. We're not even seeing it displayed in the tooltip. And that is because we have gotten to level 4 in the greater good political resolution. At level 4, diplomatic weight from pops goes up by 80%, great for our empire which is stuffed to the gills with the things, worker happiness goes up by 5%, political power of workers goes up by 75%, and the icing on the cake, empire size from pops, goes down by 10%, taking us to a total of minus 105% reduction to our empire size from pops. That means that every single pop, even on this world here, which I've artificially increased to have almost a thousand pops, will be contributing zero, nil, zilch to our empire size. Isn't it just wonderful? To really maximize this build though, you should definitely take the expansion tradition. Courier network within that will reduce our empire size from systems and planets by 25% apiece. Imperial Prerogative will drop Empire Size from planets by another 50%, meaning when we combine those bonuses, we're only really getting plus 25% Empire Size from our planets, and that is very, very manageable. Whilst we are tall, we still want to have lots of planets within our tall, tall borders. You can further reduce the Empire Size contribution from your planets by ascending them. Planetary Ascension up to Tier 10, especially when combined with the Harmony Tradition reduces empire size contributions from a colony by 50% or 62.5% once you've taken that lovely Harmony Tradition. Not only that, because our empire size is so low, planetary ascension costs almost nothing. You'll see here that each tier of my planetary ascension is costing, after fully ascending three other planets, only plus 10,000 or so per level. That is bargain basement prices. I would recommend that you try to inhabit a new planet, be that an artificial habitat you created, or a ring world segment like this one, or just a planet that you've terraformed in your small, little, tiny, tall empire space. And then as soon as you've colonized it, make sure to bump that ascension tier up to 10 before colonizing another planet. Never ever let your empire size go above 100, 100 is a dangerous and terrifying number and you need to avoid that wherever possible. There's not really anything we can do about our empire size from systems other than not taking too many systems. I think somewhere between 10 and 20 is definitely the sweet spot here. 
jumping ahead just a little bit, you can see here I've got 11 colonies and I am still below 100 empire size. 2,000 pops, 11 colonies, 183 districts, 17 systems, and still we are below any possible penalty from having empire size too high. Not only that, our edicts are ridiculously cheap. I can complete ambitions for around 100 unity per go. That's absolutely phenomenal. Converting worlds into Acumenopolis worlds, making use of decisions like expanding planetary seas or mastery of nature, all to increase the maximum number of districts a planet can have, are very, very useful when planets are the limiting resource we have at our disposal. Don't forget about building orbital rings and habitation modules as well. We need these worlds to be as tall as you can. Try to spread your pops out relatively evenly, but don't worry too much. There are more than enough bonuses we can get in the game so that we can completely ignore housing and available amenities. We're still at 80% happiness here on this ocean world, even though we're getting minus 20 stability from housing and minus 44% happiness from low amenities. Being forced to take egalitarian also has another bonus. We can use the utopian abundance living standards, which whilst costing a lot of consumer goods upkeep, it does mean that every pop is valuable and worthwhile as they'll each produce six research and a little bit of unity. So no matter how many pops you have, they are still contributing something. There's really no limit here to the size our empire can get in terms of height. This is without a doubt the tallest empire build we have ever had in Stellaris. If at any point the devs limit the amount of empire size reduction we can get for our pops, that would be a very, very sad day because I absolutely love this strategy and I would hate to see it go away. If you've enjoyed this video covering the brand new Sovereign Guardianship Civic, but you're wondering, is Astral Planes really a DLC for you? Then you would probably be interested in my review video. If you'd like me to answer the question, should you buy Stellaris Astral Planes? Click the video on screen now.